Welcome to the Hogwarts School of Hyperbolic Geometry. We're with Harry Potter today, who's going to learn how to use his compass and straight edge to make hyperbolic objects. So Harry, why don't you make hyperbolic space? I don't know what to do, says Harry. And I say, use your compass, Harry. Use your compass. So let's use our compass to make hyperbolic space. It's pretty easy. You make a circle. Don't forget to mark the center, because that's going to be kind of crucial. Make a nice dark circle that you can see. I'm going to mark that center right now. There's the center. Made a little indentation. And we have just made hyperbolic space, Harry. Look at it. All the points in here are hyperbolic points, and yet they are also Euclidean points. And that's the big deal with today's stuff. Everything has a hyperbolic meaning and a Euclidean meaning. So let's see what we got. Let's see what's in this space, Harry. Let's see what we can do. All right, let's make a hyperbolic line. Use your straight edge, Harry. So you just make a, a, a straight line. You just Whatever you've got lying around that can make a... Uh, a, a straight line. You just just find something that that's 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 got a flat edge to it. So I'm going to use my phone, and I get to make a diameter. A diameter of the hyperbolic disk is also a hyperbolic line. That's kind of cool. Now another way to make a hyperbolic line is a circle that's orthogonal to the um, to the uh, uh, space. So let's let's uh, let's make a perpendicular to the space. It's going to take a second here because I'm going to I'm going to cheat the perpendicular. Some of you are using this idea and some aren't, so we may as well go for it. So I'm just taking out a t square here. So what I'd like to do is make a nice corner right there and make a tangent. So I'm putting my pen right on that point. I'm getting my. Let's do it this way getting my stuff in place to make a nice straight tangent to the circle. That's uh, not too bad. So it's supposed to be the tangent to the circle. And now I can choose any point on here as the center of a circle that will contain a hyperbolic line. I put the point of my compass on there. I put the pencil part over here and I make this arc. Now I can make the rest of that circle, that's a Euclidean circle. I can make the rest of it anytime I want. But if you look at it, what you've got is you've got the radius is perpendicular to that radius. That means these two circles are orthogonal. This guy is my circle O. And as a matter of fact, one of the things you can do right now is you can get the inverse of any point, not that you need it, but if you ever needed it, you could get the inverse of any point on this line. The inverse of any point on this line is, if you just draw through like so, get it laid down for you. So here's, let's say it's the point A. This would be the point A inverse. I didn't have to do too much work to make that point A inverse way over here because all I had orthogonal circles and they did all the work. So let's, uh, let's see what we got here. Let's call this point B, this point C. So we have the hyperbolic line BC. Okay, it's also the arc of a Euclidean circle. So this this set of points right here, here that point that 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 arc BC is a hyperbolic line, and it's a piece of a Euclidean circle, and that's the way it is. That's in fact we're going to say things like this. This is the center of this hyperbolic line. We're, we're going to allow ourselves to say things like that because it's short for this is the center of the Euclidean circle that contains this hyperbolic line. It's such a, a, a long sentence to say when we know what we mean. Any bent hyperbolic line has a center, a Euclidean center. And notice all these points out here, these are not, not hyperbolic points, but these are points that we can use to help find hyperbolic stuff. So the hyperbolic stuff is inside here, but since everything has a double identity, it has a hyperbolic identity and 
a, a uh, Euclidean identity, it's, it's legal to, to use stuff outside of here to find things in there. All right, so that, that's a hyperbolic line. While we're at it, one of the things that's, that's in the book, and it's not in the homework, but it will be in next week's homework, is the hyperbolic distance formula. And so this, this point A is a distance, let's call this distance right here, from O to capital A, let's call that little a. Let me turn this around so you can see what I'm talking about. So this, this distance, little a, is Euclidean distance. And here's what the hyperbolic distance formula says. We're going to call it x. Let's put it right here. x equals the natural log of 1 plus a over 1 minus a. For just, for just for points in this position, they have to be on a... Uh, uh, diameter you have to be measuring from the center so this is this is not the general hyperbolic distance formula but this is x is this hyperbolic distance this the length of this segment has euclidean distance and hyperbolic distance we always take the um the disc the disc that is the space we take that to be a unit disc so euclidean distance euclidean distance o b is equal to 1. Let's say Euclidean distance OA is, it looks like here it's maybe a little less than a half. Let's call it a half. Let's say that this is a half. That's Euclidean distance. Now let's see what the hyperbolic distance would be then. So down here we have the hyperbolic distance. So the hyperbolic distance of OA would be the natural log of 1 plus a half, that's 3 halves, divided by 1 minus a half, that's 1 half. The 2's cancel, so we have natural log of 3. Natural log of 3 is bigger than 1. Natural log of 3 is 1 point something. If you don't believe me, you can get out your calculator and give it a try. Now, what happens is, if you look at this formula, remember from calculus, when a denominator gets really small, that means the fraction gets really big. And to make this denominator small, A is, is going to have to do something like become 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999. That makes this denominator really small. And when you divide by something really small, you get something really big. So let's say, let's say that uh, contrary to this example, or let's just choose a new point. Let's say I choose a new point over here. Let's call it, uh, what letter are we up to? We're up to D. So there's the point D. And let's say that OD in Euclidean, let's give OD 0.99. That's its Euclidean length. Remember the full radius is 1, so this is close to being a full radius. So then OD, now do you see I'm working down below here, so this is not, I don't mean to make it look like I'm, I'm making 0.99 equal to something else, or like here, you say OA is a half, and OA is natural log of 3. No, 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 I'm not lying to you. This is its Euclidean distance, OA. This is its hyperbolic distance, OA. Remember, in this space, everything's in the wizarding world and in the muggle world at the same time. Everything's in the hyperbolic world and in the Euclidean world at the same time. So that everything has a dual existence, including distance. This distance, OA, can be a half in Euclidean, and it's also natural log of 3 in hyperbolic. Now let's see what happens to this distance. This distance is closer to 1 in Euclidean. Let's see what it's, look, what it's like in hyperbolic. So I'm doing the natural log of 1 plus... 0.99, and that's just 1.99. And then I'm doing, dividing by 1 minus 0.99, which is 0.01. Now when you divide by 0.01, that's the same as multiplying by 100. So OD has hyperbolic length, the natural log of 199. That's much bigger than 0.99. A lot, lot bigger than 0.99. So what happens is, 
hyperbolic distances near the boundary get huge really fast. And that's why we can say things like there's an infinite amount of space in here. But you have to say it better than that. You have to say there's an infinite amount of hyperbolic space in here. Sure, the Euclidean space is limited. The Euclidean space has area pi because it's a unit disk. But for hyperbolic space purposes, there's an infinite amount of space in here. Isn't that cool? It's a very strange idea. These are the things we're going for. Now, I had a question from Euclid the Kid. Can we talk about a hyperbolic diameter? So let's do a hyperbolic diameter. There's too much drawing in this, so we're going to start with a new, clean, hyperbolic space. How do you make hyperbolic space again, Harry? Expelliarmus! No, no, try again. You just use your compass and make a circle. Isn't this easy? I'm making hyperbolic space. <laughs> there, I've made a hyperbolic space. So when you kids go home for break and they say, what did you learn in college? And you say, I learned how to make hyperbolic space. And you draw a circle and everybody's just amazed at your wisdom. So there's hyperbolic space. Now let's make a hyperbolic circle. Well, there's one cool thing. In fact, there's a lot of cool things about hyperbolic. But one of them is if you make a hyperbolic circle, if you make a Euclidean circle in the hyperbolic space, that's also a hyperbolic circle. My compass has slipped a little bit. Sorry about that. So here is a hyperbolic circle. That's a hyperbolic circle. Here's O. Let's call this thing E. So that's the point E. And why did I call it E? It's the Euclidean center. There is going to be a hyperbolic center. This construction's in the book. The hyperbolic center is going to be closer to the boundary. Because if you think about it, think about it. Just what we just did with the distance formula would indicate that the distance from O to E, that distance, or sorry, the distance from here to here, sorry, the distance from here to here is actually worth less than the distance from here to here. Those shadows are pretty bright. Let's see if I can do it this way. The, you're gonna, all right, Euclidean radius the same. These two Euclidean radii are the same. But in hyperbolic distance form, this Euclidean radius is less than this Euclidean radius. And in fact, the hyperbolic center is going to be over in here somewhere. Let me just, I'm just guessing. Now, you, this construction is in the book. But anyway, the hyperbolic center is going to be somewhere in here. And this is the point that is equidistant in hyperbolic distance formula from every point on this circle. So this segment from here to here is a hyperbolic diameter of this circle. But the distance from H to this endpoint is the hyperbolic radius. The distance from H to this endpoint is the hyperbolic radius. From E to the endpoint of this diameter is the Euclidean radius. So here's a case where there's a Euclidean radius and a hyperbolic radius, and they are not the same. This happens a lot. Now, there's another thing we could do, and it's in the book. You could construct a hyperbolic line. I'm just going to kind of draw it freehand. If I construct a hyperbolic line that goes like this, so I'm drawing it freehand. That's not, you know, not very nice of me. But if this is a hyperbolic line, then there'll be a right angle right there. And this, this arc from here to here, that arc is a hyperbolic diameter of a hyperbolic circle. Okay? There's so much more to say, so much more fun stuff to do. Get on that wiki and start answering questions, and you'll be done in no time. Lots of easy problems. So you got to do two in the first 20, and or, or less. You can do less. And then there's uh, uh, written answer questions that I'm going to keep adding to. So this week's not too bad. A gentle introduction to hyperbolic. Read the chapter, Harry. Read your book, Harry. Use your compass and straight edge. See you.